When hacking a PSP via a Pandora battery, you need three things. The first being the PSP itself, a 1000R or later 2000 model, the second being a Pandora battery, the third being a magic memory stick. The Pandora battery is either one that you've hard modded yourself, in which case it would look like an official battery, or you can buy a Pandora battery like this online. Various mod chip sites sell them, and they can swap between normal mode and Pandora mode. They come in two varieties, fat and slim. The fat variety, which this is, will work in any of the PSP models, a 1000 or a 2000, whereas the slim varieties will only work in the slim, the 2000. As for the Magic Memory Stick, it should be one that you have prepared via Protocoon 7's tutorial using PSP Grader. It must be 4 gigabytes or below, and it should be 128 megabytes or above, otherwise it can mess up when you try to do the NAND backup, which we will be doing for safety. The first thing you want to do is insert the Magic Memory Stick into the PSP itself. The location and orientation of the slot may vary, depending on the PSP model. Second thing you want to do is insert the Pandora. If it is an official battery that you have modded into a Pandora, then as long as it is modded, it is always in Pandora mode. However, for these, you need to press and hold the button for about 8 seconds to swap them into Pandora mode. You know that they have gone into Pandora mode when the lights start flashing. Like so. You'll notice that when you place the Pandora into the PSP and it makes a connection, the PSP automatically turns on. However, if you leave it like this, it will boot up to the official installed firmware. But that's not what we want. So what we are going to do is turn the PSP off again, remove the connection by just pulling the battery out, then we're going to plug it in, and then we have to press and hold the trigger or button that we set up when making the magic memory stick. By default, this is L. Now, when holding the L trigger, which I'm doing with like the palm of my hand, you'll notice that it instead boots up to a service menu. The options in order are to install custom firmware, install official firmware, NAND operations, which is where you back up or restore the flash firmware, system software, or whatever you call it of your PSP. Then there's various hardware info, an option to test custom firmware, which boots it without installing it, and then options to shut down and reboot the device. We are wanting to go to the NAND operations because we want to do a backup of the NAND for safety. The first option is dump NAND, that is what we're going to do. The second is restore NAND, which takes a NAND backup and writes it back to the PSP. NAND backups are per PSP, do not swap them between PSPs. It is solely for backup in case you screw up the PSP with modding later and brick it, you can boot off of a Pandora battery and restore the NAND. There's also the option to format L flash, which will format the PSP. This has very few uses and you will not be using it. Then there's ID storage tools, which is a submenu containing various tools to fix problems that could happen with the PSP. We are wanting to choose dump NAND. And a progress bar shows up where it is dumping the NAND. The NAND dump is made to the memory stick and this takes up about 66 megabytes. That is the size of all the flashes of the PSP combined. The PSP has multiple flashes. Flash 0 is the largest flash, and this is what contains the actual firmware. Flash 1 contains the user settings, including your wallpaper and your nickname and other such settings like that. Flash 2 and 3 are rarely used. I think one of them is used for DRM stuff with PSN titles. I'm not sure. However, they are generally almost empty. Very few, very little space is used up in them. You'll notice that the memory stick indicator will be flashing various times as it's dumping, as it's reading the NAND and then writing the contents to the memory stick. When it is finished, it will say dump completed. Press the circle to go back. Now you are at the NAND operations menu again. You want to press circle again to return to the main menu. Now from here you have the options to install a 5.00 original firmware or install 5.00 M33, which will bring us to M334. We are going to want to choose the first option because that is the firmware we want to use. Now what it's going to do first is format the flashes 0, 1, 2, and 3, and then it will 
assign them, then it will basically install the custom firmware. When it is done, the custom firmware will boot up, you will be in M33.4, and you should continue the guide from there.